everybody welcome back to fanblade it is episode two of uh the makeover we're doing on uh this old japanese rickenbacker copy uh if you haven't watched the first video then please go back don't watch this one without understanding why i'm doing what i'm doing because there's a lot that went on in that first episode i have gone back and forth over the various options of uh what is easiest and what is safest and i have decided to uh err on the side of safest as opposed to easiest because easiest is taking the fretboard off and sticking a new one on that's relatively simple is it safe though well no for two reasons uh you can splinter the neck you can splinter the fingerboard uh, and the other reason is that uh i've never done it before <laughs> i actually haven't ever taken a fingerboard off before so the safest option is to pull the frets out and uh, sand all of this out because there's a hump in the neck there there's lacquer there's inlays none of this is good for what we want on a fretless so given that i've got a whole lot of thickness on the fingerboard i'm simply going to sand it all down uh, and that should leave me with a, a a very nice a very nice slab of rosewood under there Yes, this is going to work well. I re-measured the nut because I was worried that that was wider than my Rickenbacker. It's actually half a millimetre thinner than the Rickenbacker. So by the time that we get the depth down, that's going to be pretty much spot on what, I, what I'm looking for. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to take this apart, pull the frets out, and then it's a whole lot of work, but as I say, it's the safest option. Now, I mentioned in the last video that uh, these tuners are Grover copies. Uh, the uh, Ridgeback Grovers, like the original ones, actually say Grover across there. So these are very much better than the standard Japanese tuners that you would get on instruments at the time. Um, these turn very, very smoothly. It feels like there's almost no backlash in them. I've got the wrong size bit. Slightly larger bit. Uh, so I'm very interested to get in here and see what the mechanism looks like because that like it, it feels very smooth it feels like a very well machined set of gears those are beautifully smooth that just turns beautifully i like that i like these tuners we'll be reusing these for certain So we have one fret removed, uh, that's a good start, um, you've got to apply plenty of heat to these because lacquered fingerboard it sort of acts as like extra glue. Uh, uh, also uh, if you were to just go in cold and just try ripping one out you would peel off chunks of lacquer and then you've got a real mess on your hands. That, that's not a problem for me because uh, I'm intending to actually sand the entire thing out anyway but if you were doing a refret then you'd have a major problem on your hands. Um, so, uh, plenty of heat, um, and uh, uh, you go careful, be careful, uh, because these things are precious. Now, I had hoped that I would be going low enough that I would also take out the fret slots, and then I could have a perfectly smooth, unlined fretless fingerboard. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I just tested the depth here. Shove a bit of paper, fold it over. Uh, pretty much half of the fingerboard um, I don't really want to do that so uh, this is going to be a lined fingerboard which is going to uh, be a little bit interesting filling those slots I've got to be a bit more precise because we've got binding on either side to deal with um, but that's okay I will cross that bridge when I come to it So you can clearly see where I'm not putting enough heat into it. That fret, uh, that's the fourth one I took out, obviously starting to get a little bit, uh, a little bit impatient, 
uh, tried putting more and more heat and more time into this one, still wasn't enough. Um, these have all come out nice and clean, but this one's just lifted splinters all the way up. That's not right. Um, that one's almost right. <laughs> But uh, clearly I have to make sure I've got enough time and enough heat going into these. I suspect my soldering iron may have cooled down a bit. So I'll uh, give that a rest uh, and I'll come back in a couple of minutes once the soldering iron's back at maximum heat. Uh, and I'll just slowly keep cutting through these. I might actually put, a, uh, put an old school clock in the shot so you can see exactly how long this is going to take. Right, the frets are out and we are looking good. I've gone away, I've had a good hard think about what is next and what is best. Um, and there's a, there's a few different things to consider, so bear with me. <laughs> the neck has a hump in it, in this area. Um, I've got the truss rod as straight as I possibly can and there's it's just in this area here. It's you know, we've got we've got a, a, a fairly a fairly substantial kink. So uh, so that has to be sanded out. That is going to require taking all of the lacquer and everything off. We are losing at least half a millimeter, at the very least. At that point, I need to stop and I need to check if the the CA finish that I want to put on this board will stick to these inlays. If it does, cool, that's great, we will stop right there. If it doesn't, then I have to keep sanding and we're going to have to take the inlays off. Um, the other important thing to consider is that I need to fill these fret slots and that's that the method that I use to fill those is going to depend on how much I take down. The options of course are veneer or uh, I was going to, I was thinking about uh, taking some of the rosewood sandings, uh, mixing them up with wood glue and uh, filling the slots with that. Now that's not a myth, that's not my preferred method. Um, it's a little bit too close to using wood filler for my liking. And by the way, wood filler, if you're doing a fretless fingerboard, don't fill the slots with wood filler. This is little better than dirt. It is soft, it is spongy, even the dry stuff around the outside, it's like, it's basically modelling clay. Um, this has no structural rigidity. When you put strings on the neck, it's going to fold up like that, and all that wood filler is just going to get squished. Don't use wood filler. Cannot stress that enough. So the options, of course, are putting veneer strips in, or uh, using rosewood sanding dust uh, mixed with wood glue. Um, and that's, you know, that's probably going to be a lot easier because bearing in mind we're dealing with binding on the outsides as well, that's going to make this, make putting strips in a little bit tough. Okay, so this is the setup. Um, my radius sanding jig is kind of, it's, it's designed for sanding radiuses into necks that are just neck blanks. Um, uh, when it's a pre-carved neck, these, uh, these alignment screws don't really, don't really do anything to center it, they don't really they don't really grab onto the neck. So I've got it clamped at each end. If it moves, I'll have to stop and reset. Uh, I'm hoping it won't. It's pretty securely clamped. There is a wedge in the middle so that it can't bend in the centre. Uh, I am using a 14 inch sanding block. Um, I made this on the channel. Uh, and there's a video uh, somewhere in the corner where you can see how I made that. Um, 
and currently it's got 40 grit on it. I'm going to use 40 to take off the lacquer, then I'm going to switch out to 80 to sand out the rest of the hump, then I'm going to hit it with some 120 and at that point uh, I will stop and uh, we will test the uh, test the CA glue on these inlays just to see if it's going to stick or not. Uh, I will be wearing a mask and going slowly and carefully. So this is already very telling uh, where we've gone through the lacquer more at this end than we had oh boy, only just starting to break through it down there but we're already you know well into it down here so that's that's a good indication we've taken more off here we are getting rid of the uh, getting rid of the hump uh, it's kind of hard work <laughs> I'm gonna stick with the 40 grit until I've got all of the lacquer off then uh, uh, I'll change it up to the 80 smooth it out a bit because it's pretty rough I wouldn't I wouldn't want to play it as it is uh, certainly not. Uh, so yeah, it's working. I'll carry on. Okay, it is looking good and smelling lovely. <laughs> Rosewood is great. Um, uh, I have sanded out to 120. I've saved some of the sanding dust for filling the slots. I'm hoping that's going to be enough. If it's not, I do have another vintage Japanese neck over there which is never going to be an instrument again. Um, so I do have some Rosewood on hand. I can grind some up. Um, the only thing I need to test now is some super glue on the inlays because I believe these are actually just plastic. Uh, I think just a drop on there and I'll come back in 20 minutes and see if it sticks basically uh, if I just tap it with the edge of a chisel and see if it if it peels off cleanly then well we've got a problem can't use it. Just a little drop just to see and it's gone everywhere of course it has. Um, that's all right. We're not done sanding, so this is just a little test, and uh, we'll uh, see how that goes in a little bit. Okay, so this is our test blob. It's a couple of hours later. That's fully cured. That's fully hardened. Um, and the big question is, can I uh, scrape it off with a razor blade and have it go down to the level that I want to take it, which is would be level with the rest of the fingerboard, uh, or will it chip off the plastic? Yeah, this is basically the test. Um, so. It is scraping. It is scraping. It is not coming off the plastic. not coming off it's not coming off yes all right okay that's a great result uh, so I needn't have worried about having to sand all the way through the inlays it's like this is going to be fine as is um, uh, I'm really happy with how that's turned out uh, the next step of course is to uh, pack a bunch of dust into the, all of these slots 
uh, tamp it down nice and hard and then uh, roll a bead of CA glue in on top. Uh, and that's going to uh, soak down in and it's going to fill the entire slot and it's going to you know, be a, v a very, very solid fix. Um, uh, I have toyed with the idea of uh, mixing this stuff up with PVA. Uh, some people would prefer that, I'm sure, because uh, it's uh, a bit more elastic and, you know, as boards move and, yeah, th like there's, there's, there's definite merit to, to, to that idea. Uh, uh, but I just feel that uh, mixing this with PVA glue and trying to pack it in the slots is going to, like, it's not going to go in evenly. It's too small of an area to work in. Um, whereas I can, I know I can fill the entire slot with this powder, tamp it down, run some glue in. I'll probably do the entire board uh, and then go back with another, put another layer of glue across the top and just so everything's properly set in. Uh, uh, and that should be uh, nice and solid and very, very stable, which is exactly what we want. It's time to lay in some uh, lay in some glue. I'm a little bit worried that there's going to be the classic uh, uh, super glue and baking soda, or super glue and graphite, or super glue and any kind of powdered substance kind of uh, exothermic reaction, which means it might get a bit hot. I'm hoping that it's localized enough that it's not going to do any uh, not going to do any damage. I can't I can't really see it being a problem. Like it's not going to burst into flames or anything. Um, however, it will be giving off uh, quite a substantial amount of gases very rapidly. So, mask. I'm turning the fan on, and uh, yes, hoping I don't dribble it around anywhere too much. I've, I've cleaned up the edges, so if any does just happen to run over the side, it's not going to glue dirty dust to the edge of the guitar. So, um, Right, uh, I guess we'll just we'll begin. Well, it ain't, oh, ha, careful, um, it ain't pretty, but it sure does stink. Um, as I said, we are far from done sanding, uh, so this is more or less to be expected. Um, I'm going to leave that overnight to dry. See you tomorrow. Right, it is the next day. Uh, all this glue has fully cured, I've set it up in the jig, and we are going to go in with some 80 grit, uh, just to uh, knock all of that down. Uh, as soon as we get the bulk of it off, I'll switch into the 120, and probably I'll go for some 240 as well, just to uh, get it nicely smoothed out and leveled and ready for uh, actually applying the final finish, which of course will be CA glue, uh, but it'll be a lot smoother than it is now. <laughs> yeah, alright, let's get cracking. Alright, that's the sharp edges taken care of. Uh, that feels rather nice in the hand. I, I wonder if I could uh, t 
take a little bit more off there, but I'm I'm cutting into the ancient lacquer, and I'm taking off the yellowing, and I don't really want to do that. It's all right. That's like the, that's not it's not a sharp edge. I prefer it slightly more rolled, but I may do that later if I decide that it's uh, a problem. Um, Right now it's time to finish the surface of the fingerboard because it is sanded out to 240, it is perfectly smooth, it is perfectly flat, oh it's a beautiful thing, it is an absolutely beautiful thing. Finishing, of course it's me, I'm going to use super glue, you knew that. Um, uh, I get a lot of questions about this and basically the, the process is you add some water thin super glue first. And uh, I know these two bottles look identical, but uh, uh, one of them has that label on it. And the other one, the label fell off, but it actually looks like that in the packet. So uh, I get it from the dollar store. It's an absolutely fine wood finish. I wouldn't use it for any um, major structural... <laughs> uh, like I wouldn't glue a fingerboard to a neck using this stuff. Um, uh, but for, for finishing wood and for doing little like drop fills and things like that, little repairs, super glue, mint, absolutely great. Bit of water thin first, it soaks in, it gets into the wood, it soaks in a bit, uh, a bit further, makes a nice hard layer, uh, and then uh, of course inevitably that raises a few wood fibres, it sort of swells up just a little bit, you get some 400 grit, and you lightly take those bumps off, and then you're just in finishing town and uh, I use the that one um, I use the, the the slightly thicker glue uh, it's more like a gel and you can uh, wipe that on in big thick layers and it just builds the finish really really fast I just use these pads here these are you know uh, these little cloths I actually but you buy a huge roll like that uh, from the uh, hardware store and it's about as environmentally friendly as a nuclear waste site uh, but you cut it into little pieces and uh, every one of them is good for one layer uh, before it uh, starts to uh, <laughs> starts to spontaneously set in the cloth and get very hot uh, so gloves mask turn on the fan action Okay, uh, it's been about six hours, there's about 12 coats on there. Um, I had to stop using the uh, the thicker gel as the humidity in here at the moment is too high uh, and it was curing too fast, I couldn't get it on evenly. Um, so I had to uh, wait for uh, a couple of layers of that to cure, then I've sanded it out just with some 400. Going back to using the water thin stuff when you get a little bit more, like it just spreads a bit more evenly. Uh, uh, so that's good, uh, carried on with that, and now we've got a nice thick layer on there. Um, you can tell when you've broken through to the rosewood, because you wind up with brown. If you're just sanding white, you're only sanding glue, and that's all you want to sand. So, uh, I've got a little bit, like, uh, I've got a little bit of sandpaper here, I think that's pretty much all I'm going to need. This thing's got a few little streaks in it. But aside from that, it's looking very, very good. I'm going to see if I can just sand those streaks out. And hopefully, I won't have to add uh, too many more layers. Just going very lightly. I just want to take the tops off that. Just want to touch the top of it and no more. I'm not trying to remove a lot of material. I'm just trying to level out that surface. When you're, when you're using 400, sort of 600, 800 and above that, you're not actually removing material, you are literally just polishing the surface. Still just white, that's all, that's all we're getting. That's what we want to see. Right, a microfiber cloth takes away all that dust. 
and what we're left with is not particularly even looking. I could probably sand that out a little bit more. As you go, you see the little shiny spots, which are the low points that the sandpaper hasn't hit yet, and you see them start to shrink, and you realise just how little you have to take off, and how careful you have to be. haven't gone through the glue. We are still sanding, still sanding glue. And we've reached the point where I can't feel the inlays at all. I can't feel any of the fret slots. I can barely even see the fret slots. <laughs> this is good. This is what I wanted to see. There's a few little shiny streaks just through it. I might just grab some more sandpaper and keep going. Just a little bit more. Oh, do I want to push my luck? Here we go. There seems to have been one long streak as a result of, uh, you know, uh, just the way the sometimes the way the cloth is folded, you can actually just leave a wee streak, um, uh, and that's fine. Uh, you don't want to sand a lot in one area across the strings, but sanding a lot in one area all the way up the neck, it's still going to be, still going to be even enough. How's that looking? Oh, it's so close. It's so close. There's also a little bit uneven at the end, uh, just because as that's sort of where the cloth that goes on and comes off sometimes it gets a little bit splodgy, so you've got to look out for that. Yeah, I'm calling it good. I'm calling it good. There's a couple of very, very faint shiny bits still, but this is only 400. I don't want to take off too much, so I'm going to switch into the 600 and the 800, and hopefully that should even the rest of those out. Yes, it's polishing time, effectively. All right, I have some 600, 800, and 1,000 just very lightly here, all we want to do is buff this surface up to a high shine. And that, that has indeed taken off the last of those shiny bits. Might be a tiny little spot there. Maybe one there. Uh, that's alright. We'll carry on. 800 grit. <laughs> it's so smooth, it's just silky. That is ready for polishing. Uh, I like to use the Norton triple uh, zero, I think it's the triple zero. Yeah, triple zero, extra fine, light cleaning steel. Except there's nothing steel about it; it's entirely synthetic, uh, and you only need a little bit. So just cut a little bit off, and that's just a nice little pad, just to rub this down. Right, again, all still white powder, no signs that I've gone through the wood anywhere, so that's excellent, that is now buffed out, that is, that is so nice, I, I, I'm so sorry dear viewers that you can't feel how smooth that is, <laughs> oh, it's a joyous thing. There we go, an absolutely pristine fretless fingerboard. 
that's just absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I love how smooth that is. That's going to be so nice to play. Oh yes. Oh yes indeed. Oh right. Okay. Uh, so, where are we at with the base? Well, uh, I need to polish the rest of the metal parts. I also need to uh, get some hardware for the body. Now I have ordered the hardware. It's on its way. Hopefully I can get everything prepared and ready and uh, mostly done so that when the hardware arrives I can just drop it straight in and then demonstrate the thing. Because I'm absolutely champing at the bit to play this thing. Oh wow. Uh, so yes, uh, that'll be coming up in the next video. So uh, now we'll just say thank you very much for watching, thank you very much for subscribing and make sure you come back next time to see what this thing turns into. Ah, oh, brilliant. Yes, um, right, thank you, goodbye.